guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing a Q&A. If you're new to my channel, my name is Alex. I also call myself the Buff Unicorn. Essentially, I like to say I'm a buff girl with a bubbly personality. If you don't think so, that's fine. But today, over the course of the year that I've been doing social media, there have been so many questions and I've never done a full video just answering all the questions that people have had about me. So number one, and I'm answering all of these from my Instagram. So if you don't follow me over there, that's where I'll always do my past away due to malnutrition and dehydration and my electrolytes were extremely imbalanced so I did not go to a treatment I had to choose if I wanted to live or DIE then and there and so I choose to live however recovery was one of the hardest things I've ever had to go through because at the end of the day the thing that you're most terrified of is gaining weight and I was choosing to gain weight intentionally and that was the hardest thing because if I told somebody that I didn't like myself because I was gaining weight I could stop whenever I wanted and so the power is literally in your hands and you just have to decide what you want more if you want to die for a smaller body or if you want to live in a bigger healthier body so I did not go to treatment but I did it all by myself Ooh, do you feel like people thought you became boring when you started the gym great question so self-improvement is a very and can be a very lonely thing because a lot of people are actually only friends with you or associate with you because you're not better than them. And so whenever I started trying to get better, I lost a lot of friends. However, realize I did not have a lot of friends anyways growing up. I've never had a lot of friends. I talked about this on my last podcast episode, but friends were always something very difficult for me to make. So that did make it easier to start my self-improvement journey because I didn't really have that much to lose. And I started going to the gym religiously when I was in college and I had like zero friends. And that's also when I started social media. So they kind of went hand in hand. But even now, people that don't understand your goals or your passions, it's not their fault that they don't understand but it is your responsibility to know how to handle their lack of understanding and you can't be mad at them for not kind of encouraging your goals but you can try to understand why they don't and sometimes friendships are not supposed to last forever like you're allowed to distance yourself from them and you're allowed to find new friends and new people in a new community that will support you do you have a boyfriend I got so many questions about my boyfriend yes I do have a boyfriend we've been dating for about three months now talking for like four and I've only ever had one other boyfriend before. It's something very interesting and new because I wasn't in the best relationship in the past. We were both toxic. It was not only on him. So now being with somebody that it's fully just, I don't know. Whenever you find somebody that truly does love you and truly just understands you, and any, even if they don't understand you, they want to understand you, it truly is crazy and life-changing. I'll never post him because he does not want to be online like he has been open about that he doesn't want to be posted so like if you follow me on tiktok he will be talking in the background you can hear him or you'll see his hands or like the back of him but i will never post him or tag him because i respect him and his privacy i'm a content creator he's not and he has no desire to be but he's great he's amazing and he makes me feel extremely loved and also like when i'm with him i feel like a woman and nobody's ever been able to make me feel like that before because i do feel like i have a very masculine presence but he allows me to be feminine when I'm with him and it's really nice so never settle. I have been on so many first dates before him and I would not change anything if I knew that I were to end up with him like I am now so. What are your opinions on cutting, bulking, and dieting from Nicole? My opinions on that, I've talked about this a lot but I don't like the phrases cutting and bulking because it insinuates that I think that the wording around the things that you do means a lot so if you know that you're intentionally losing or gaining weight it can be fine however for a lot of people you don't realize that those terms are specifically for the sport of bodybuilding it's not for normal people and I think that you can intentionally like lose fat if you want to gain muscle if you want to you're gonna lose and gain fat with those like it doesn't matter but it's all about your mindset so if you're wanting to do either of these things in an unhealthy way it's gonna be unhealthy no matter what you do for me right now I am on a little mini cut that's what I want to say for this really I'm not changing Changing anything I'm just walking more because I throughout the winter I was of course more sedentary because it's freezing outside I think it's all about your mindset so like used to I would I would go to unhealthy 
healthy measures to lose weight. I have been losing probably like half a pound a week and that's so slow, but for me, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with doing something slow if it means that I can maintain results long-term instead of short-term. Uh, one of my favorite like people to watch when it comes to nutrition is Natasha Ocean and she talks so much about how to lose fat healthily and how to gain it healthily. So I recommend watching her videos on that. Any advice? Hmm. Okay, so how do I truly get over the fear of my body fluctuating and just accept it? This is a big question. Um, and I'm happy that you asked. This was from Strawberry Mochi Pieces. That's a cute name. But essentially, it's not even about your body changing. Your body changing is not the issue. You need to figure out why you're afraid of your body changing. So like, what psychologically has made you afraid for your body to change? That means that there has to be something in your life that has caused you to think that your body changing is a negative thing, whether it be people online or people in your life. There has been a theme that a changing body is bad when it really just isn't. You go through different seasons of life and it's so unrealistic for you to think that your body's gonna stay the same. I work out the exact same amount that I did this time last year. However, I was like 10 pounds lighter this time last year but I also was in college I had to walk everywhere I was working full-time and I was also a full-time student and I didn't have enough money for groceries so of course I'm gonna be leaner than that I am now where I have enough money for groceries I'm not walking everywhere my job is now social media and like you just I if I were to be like oh my gosh I'm less valuable now because I don't have a shredded six-pack that's so sad whenever you view it from a third person point of view if you were to look at somebody that you know and shame them for their body change changing, whether they weigh less or weigh more, you would be like, wow, they are so inconsiderate and insufferable. But you are still a human being and you doing that to yourself is literally the exact same thing. It doesn't mean anything different just because it's you. You're still a human and you still deserve to respect yourself. You can lose or gain weight. What, like, that's your choice. I don't care what you do, but I do just ask that whatever you do to your body, you do it out of respect and not out of hatred because that is what produces long-term results as well as as sustainable results mentally and physically. Ooh, okay, so Meow asked, have you ever been fat or overweight? Okay, I grew up overweight my entire life. I was always the bigger kid and I know that had a really huge role to play in my four year long journey with anorexia. I dealt with binge eating when I was a kid and I didn't like realize that's what it was at the time because I mean like nobody tells you that's what that is. I just thought that it was normal, it was not. But growing up, always being the bigger kid in places it made me super hyper aware of taking up space and that made me really insecure because a lot of times my space the space that I was taking up was not appreciated so it made me feel like a burden and so I think that was a really big thing during my eating disorder is I wanted to take up as little space as possible so that people couldn't be mad at me for existing which sounds wild but that's just really how it was and now though I can say that don't care if I take up space. I'm okay with taking up space and I'm proud of the space that I take up because I am proud. I have so much respect for myself that I could care less if somebody else is bothered by my presence. And that's really all that I can hope for you is that you can get to that place where you no longer care how others feel about your presence as long as you are confident enough in you and your character that you know that no matter how somebody else feels about you, it truly does not matter. If you were starting your fitness journey from scratch, what would you prioritize? Great question. I think that a lot of people when you get started in the gym are so all or nothing and so you probably start going like five days a week going balls to the wall whenever really you should. I would recommend prioritizing maybe starting like three days a week because what you want to do is essentially create the habit of I wouldn't say trusting yourself, but if you say you're gonna go five days a week and you don't go those five days a week, you only go three, you're gonna feel as though you failed. But if you go three days a week and you tell yourself that you're gonna go three days a week, you'll trust yourself and you'll trust that you can stick to things. So I recommend starting smaller, maybe a lower body day, an upper body day, and a cardio day. And then you can build off of that two leg days a week to upper body. I personally go to the gym four to five times a week. I don't go as much as I used to because I felt that my body was extremely stressed out and I wasn't recovering. So yeah. How to stop binge eating and how long did it take you to lose the binge weight? Okay, 
So binge eating is also something that I struggled with a long time before I ever was anorexic. When after I recovered from anorexia, I went through extreme hunger, which then I had a question about that, so I'll answer it. But binge eating came for me a few months after, and that was, I'm not mad at it. I did not shame myself for going through it. It was really difficult to go through because I really hated myself at the time because I thought that it was all about self-control and it's not. It's not about willpower. It's about just systems that you've set up for yourself in place are not working for you and you just need to change them. So I struggled with binge eating like in the middle of anorexia and then after. It was rough. The second time I dealt with it I gained about 20 pounds and it was right before college and I it took me about six months to lose it but I wasn't Again, you have to remember, I didn't have money for groceries. I was walking everywhere. And I really had just stopped binge eating because I went to college and like it was a different environment so I didn't feel the need to binge eat. It was a lot. Um, if you're going through binge eating right now, I have an entire video about how to get over that, how to get through that, work on that and all that jazz. It's rough, I know it is, trust me. And I feel for you if you are going through that right now. Julia asked two questions. When are you planning to move out and would you like to have kids? I already moved out. Do I want to have kids? Yes. Do I don't know if I'll be able to have kids though since I did have an eating disorder for so long. I don't know if I'm infertile or not because I lost my period for three to four years and that's a big thing. I would like to have kids, not anytime soon. I don't want to have kids until I'm like 25 because I want to like not live my best years but I want to be in a place where I'm ready to provide and I want to provide for my children. Like I want to intentionally have children. I'm not saying that if you like got pregnant by accident that the child is not intentional but I would just like to bring a child into the world knowing that I can provide mentally and physically the best that I can um, because I never want them to feel unwanted or as if they were a mistake steak to me. Pepper. Just imagine little buff unicorn babies. Ooh, it'd be so cute. Babe hobbies that aren't fitness related by Jaina. Great question actually because the past year I've found so many new hobbies that don't include working out and it's been so good for me. So I will give you a few. The first one, music. I love music. Learning how to play instruments like guitar and piano. I've been slacking on that. I need to get better. Um, the second is reading. So I've already read two books this year which doesn't sound like a lot. I I actually read one this weekend, like I read the whole thing. And it's really because I just enjoy reading. I also love learning. So reading, since I'm not in school right now, helps me with that. Uh, the third thing, coloring. I love coloring or doing my nails. I love doing my nails. My hands are swollen right now because I'm hot, but I love doing my nails. Being in nature, I love going on walks. That sounds fitness related, but I like to walk and read. And also editing. So like content creation for me, even though it is my job, I find it a hobby so like just the art of content creation learning more about it all that stuff yeah also love making jewelry i really do a lot of things it just depends on my mood honestly but you can literally do anything like a hobby can be anything it don't have to be like some expensive thing like you can go thrifting i love going thrifting somebody said that i avoid unhealthy foods because it still scares you no i don't i don't avoid any food i do eat out i just don't post it and i think that a lot of people think i just don't eat out because I never post it. But that's the beautiful thing is I'm at a place with food now that when I eat something that's not healthy, I don't feel a need to post it on my story to prove that I eat unhealthy things. Like I don't have to prove that to anybody. Like I just went and got crumbled the other day because I wanted it, but I didn't post it because I didn't feel the need to. Or if I want Chick-fil-A or Chipotle or a burger or a steak, I don't care. Like I will eat it and I don't have to take a video of it and post it because... And if I do post unhealthy things, people get mad at me and tell me I'm not healthy. So, I mean, honestly, it's never a win. Yeah, I just don't post when I eat sweets or junk food because I don't feel the need to. Like, I don't feel the need to prove myself or my eating habits to anybody. <laughs> What's your natural hair color? Whatever it is, black is it for you, girl? You look stunning. My natural hair color I'll post on the screen is like auburn. My family's Irish and Cherokee. So we got thick 
hair red tinted but i i love the black i love the black it just i think it's much more flattering in my opinion okay can you talk more about your process with extreme hunger and honoring it extreme hunger was a wild ride so i posted like a whole five minute long tiktok video about this but essentially for me extreme hunger was it was wild so i was eating anywhere from five to ten thousand calories a day and yes that wide of a range it just depended on how bad the extreme hunger was that day so like as soon as i woke up in the morning i was starving i would eat like two or three breakfasts like back to back i was having huge servings of things and essentially what extreme hunger is is after an extended period of time of restriction your body is so malnourished and mentally you're so hungry you feel as though no matter how much you eat that you just are not satisfied and your stomach is still physically growling i need some water and it took about three to four months for me to get out of that the first two weeks that i was in extreme hunger i gained 20 pounds in two weeks and let me tell you the girl was having a panic attack because nothing fit me the edema was awful i was so swollen because my body was holding on to so much water it was wild but the best advice that i have for that is that you have to go through it to get over it because if you don't then you're gonna just start the binge restrict cycle which means you'll never get out of it because you're in a cycle of toxic behaviors that are not helping you they're just harming you and as scary as it is to go through that and gain weight being on the other side i can tell you that it's all okay and that you just have to trust your body because it knows you better than i do or anybody online does how tall are you i am 5'9 i'm quite tall people think i'm short they think i'm like 5'2 do you only read non-fiction if not what other literature genres do you enjoy i usually only read non-fiction because again i like learning if i want to enter a different universe i'll watch stuff i love watching tv shows i mainly only read non-fiction because if i'm reading i want to be learning is it hard to be relevant in the fitness industry if you aren't skinny from Anna Grace. Honestly, I kind of feel like it's the opposite. I sometimes feel like I'm too skinny and that I'm like irrelevant since I'm not like jacked enough to be in the fitness industry. I think that everybody serves their own purpose. At the end of the day, people don't follow me for my body. There is a reason, there's a part of that that it is. But people follow me because they value the themes that I produce and the content that I produce and the way that it makes you feel, not the way that I look. So at the end of the day, it's all about how many people feel, not the way that you look. How many calories do you eat a day? My view on cows is so distorted. I need guidance. So I don't like talking about how many calories I eat a day. Right now, I'm eating anywhere from 22 to 2400 a day. I know that because I track loosely. Is it going to be exact every time? No. Do I really care? No. Essentially, you can increase your metabolism just by weightlifting and your non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Again, if you want to know how to increase your metabolism, I recommend been watching Natasha Ocean because she uses empirical based studies and reviews and she gives you all the science and all that and I would recommend that instead of listening to me. Where did you get your Bible from? I got my Bible from Amazon. I love my Bible. I searched so long for it. Actually this grandmother, the one I have the B for, she's the one that got it for me for my birthday and I love that she did because she wrote on the inside of it um, before she passed away. But if you want a journaling Bible, and it's leather because I like to be able to like flip bind over so I can like write a post my own screen. Do you still deal with binge eating? If no, how long ago was your last binge from Gap? My last binge was probably like six months ago. I had started the habit of chewing and spitting my food out, um, trigger warning, and uh, it was a really dark time for me. I just got off my antidepressants, which help with uh, compulsive behaviors like that. And it was right after I got back from Houston the second time. My, mil so my mental health was so low. Not a good time. That's all I have to say. I have thank and I have gained weight since then. I've gained weight since I got off my antidepressants because they were stimulant. They made me not hungry. And since I've been off of those, because I was on them for four years, and since I've been off of them, I have gained weight, which I'm okay with that. But um, that was definitely my last binge and I haven't benched since then. It wasn't 
quite as bad as ones in the past. It's just the feeling of not having control around food and that's what it was. Can you talk about your faith and how to grow your relationship with God? My relationship with the Lord has been something rocky, but the good thing about the Lord is that he's so faithful to you. So like no matter where you go, he's always gonna be there and he never leaves, which is very nice. But um, I have a whole entire podcast episode about my relationship, my testimony, and right now I can say I'm not as close. I'm not following the Lord as closely as I would like to, and that's my fault. It's not anybody else's. Um, I would, I'm reading the Bible in a year. A lot of you guys know that. And so I kind of been slacking on that, which is my fault. However, I've come so far with my relationship with him, like used to, I would think if I didn't read my Bible or if I didn't do certain things that I should be doing, that the Lord wouldn't love me. And that's just not how he works. The, um, Jesus died for the imperfect versions of us. We will never be perfect, but in him and through his sacrifice for us, we are made whole. How do you balance everything in your life, like prioritizing God, family, friends, work, etc.? Balance is hard. I also have a whole podcast episode about balance. It was my last episode. Balance is something that you find whenever you stop people pleasing. I think that a lot of us want to people please and have a balanced life. You can't do that because if you are constantly trying to please others, you will never be able to find balance for yourself because you won't be doing what is good for you. You'll be doing what's good for everybody else. But if you want a whole explanation of that, a podcast. We're at 300 reviews at five stars, which is sad. What are some things that make you happy? Some things that make me happy. My morning coffee, fluffy yogurt, a really pretty sunset or sunrise, getting to spend time quality time with my loved ones, an unexpected text from a friend, somebody checking up on me, a kind DM from one of you guys. Sometimes y'all will email me and that makes my day. Seeing the value out of the content that I create, little like God's little blessings in my day-to-day -day life, just reminders that he listens to me like when I talk to him. And uh, I love peanut butter and I am so not ashamed. And a really cute gym shark outfit. Trust. Code of Unicorn. So we have, you're content being single and where did you meet your boyfriend? I was very content being single. I was single for two years before I met my boyfriend now and I'm still very independent. Like we don't spend all of our time together, um, not because we don't like each other, but just because, I mean, that's healthy. I have just always been a very independent human being though. So I've found that, are you actually lonely or are you just alone? And just because you're alone does not mean you have to be lonely. You can be very content with your own presence. And then where did I meet my boyfriend? I met him at my gym. Story time. So I used to work at the gym and so I'd never seen him before and it was just one random day. It was February 1st and I saw him and I was like this dude kind of cute. And so I was like thinking the whole time about how to go up and ask him something. So I went up to him and I asked him, I was like, hey, I like your hoodie. Where did you get it from? Well, really this is like what I said. I said, this is going to be such a weird question. I really like your hoodie and I was just wondering where you got it from. And he was like, oh, I got it from TikTok shop. He was being so short with me and I was like okay he definitely has a girlfriend in my head if he wanted to talk to me more he could send me the link to it you know didn't send me a link so I don't get his info or anything I thought he just wasn't interested which I was fine with I'm okay with rejection and a week later exactly a week later my Miley Cyrus TikTok popped off and went on his for you page and that's how he found me so he DM'd me on TikTok from there. And this was also, I had like 20,000 followers on TikTok at the time and I have 120 now. So then he was like, no way, you're the cute girl from the gym. And here we are now. It was kind of wild. But what is something you would love to study? I love psychology um, because your brain and your mental health impacts the rest of your life and the way that you live your life. And I think that if you like psychologically can get past anything, then you can do anything. So I am going back to school. I already completed my first year of college, but I didn't go back personal reasons. But yeah, that's something that I'm gonna go back and do. I wanna get my doctorate in that and maybe open my own practice one day specializing in addiction and eating disorders. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. That is the end of the Q&A. Hopefully I answered most of your guys' questions. There were a lot, but I'm thankful for each and every one of them. If you're not following me already on any other social platforms, I'll put them on the screen. TikTok is doing super well right now. If you want more daily content, I literally, the unfiltered version of me is on TikTok. I post anything over there. But yeah, I'm so thankful for you and I hope you have an amazing day. Stay buff and bubbly.